Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be making a, a minor repair to the steps on our Kodiak travel trailer. So the uh, steps there behind us, those are um, a step above made by Moor Ride, the uh, same company that uh, makes the uh, CRE 3000 suspension that, that I installed on there. Uh, it's a company that makes a lot of different aftermarket parts to improve the, uh, the quality of, of your RV. Uh, but anyway, so the steps that are on here, there's a minor problem with them. I discovered this whenever we were in Idaho and I had to make a, re a field repair there on these steps, but now uh, I'm having the same problem again. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish getting these guys fixed permanently, and I'm gonna bring you along and show you what I'm gonna do. So the problem that I've discovered with the steps is in the factory, whenever they attach this part of the step to this upper swing bracket right here, they use rivets. Okay, I don't think that's the best choice, but that's how they do this. They use rivets to hold everything together. But after a period of time, especially this is a stress point right here, you can see how it moves. And when people are going up and down the steps, you're putting all your weight on this and it's putting a lot of stress on these rivets here. And what that's causing them to do is break. Plus they're rusting out, so it's not a really good quality fastener to put in there and they're light duty because they're hollow. So after a lot of wear, those rivets are gonna give way and they're gonna break. On our last trip, I think we were at the, fly, uh, the flywheelers, I, I was coming out and I stepped down on the first step and I felt it kind of pop. And I said, yep, I bet the rivet had just broken and it did. I, I bent down there and looked at it and um, both of the rivets were actually gone at that point. So we're gonna fix this. I've already done one side. This side right here, you might, you notice I've got some uh, quarter inch hex nuts there. So what I had done, we were in Idaho, up in Idaho Falls is when I discovered this side was broken, the rivets were both gone. So what I did, I acquired a couple bolts and some nuts from the hardware store. I had to pick up some drill bits too because I didn't have any drill bits with me. And I just simply drilled out the holes to a quarter inch and installed some quarter inch bolts. That is what we're gonna do for this side here. But while we're at it, since these, these are rivets as well on both sides, I know those are eventually gonna fail as well. Uh, not as much strain on these as it is on this upper joint, but we're gonna go ahead and drill these rivets out, replace them with stainless steel hardware so that we don't have to worry about these guys breaking again. So let me show you what I'm gonna use for this repair. You're gonna need um, you know, a C-clamp or two to kind of hold everything together. I've also got this piece of 3 16 round bar. That's gonna help align the existing holes. It's a little, the holes are a little bigger than 3 16 but this is gonna work, all right? You're gonna need a drill bit. I got a quarter inch drill bit. Just have a good quality drill. Got a drill motor there as well. And in the hardware, I'm gonna be using a stainless steel. That's what I would recommend for this so that you don't have to worry about this starting to rust. If you use a galvanized or a zinc coated bolt, it's eventually it's gonna start rusting and it's gonna kinda of look nasty. So things like this, your RV, you wanna use stainless steel hardware so that it stays nice and clean and pretty throughout the life of the RV. Now I'm gonna be using these stainless steel button head bolts. You do not have to use button head, but I, these, I already had these in the shop. And I like them because of the location of where I got to install them. I can put them on an Allen wrench and reach up in there and stick it through the hole and then get the nut started on the back side. So it just makes it a little bit easier. I always order mine from McMaster Car. You're going to have a hard time going down to your local Lowe's or, Lowe's or Home Depot to find the right hardware, but they, they might have them. Also going to be using some quarter inch nylock lock nuts. So these, you don't have to worry about them loosening up and backing off. They have the nylon inside, so they'll stay nice and tight. I also got some stainless steel washers we're gonna be use, using there as well. So I think that's it. We're gonna go ahead and get started on the repair job now. All right, so I'm gonna take my 3 16 rod and I'm gonna go ahead and try to line up the existing holes because they're not lined up. You just kind of move the uh, steps around a little bit, just like that. Now it's not gonna be perfect, but this is gonna be good enough for what we're doing right there, okay? And then we're gonna take our C-clamp. I'm gonna come in behind it here. And you wanna clamp both of the pieces tight together so that it's held there. And then once you do, you should be able to just take this rod, and just pull it out of the way. Now the holes are pretty well lined up. We get in here with our drill bit and just drill both of the holes out. All right, now that we got the uh, holes lined up, we're just gonna take a drill motor and a drill bit, and we're gonna drill the holes out. Easy as 
that. We'll do one side, I'm gonna come over here and instead of trying to go all the way through, it's easier just to do each side. Easy as that. Now, while it's uh, clamped, let me see something. I don't know if it'll close. I actually didn't have the luxury of having a C-clamp with me when we were on the road, but I knew if I had one, it'd make my job a little easier. Let's see if it'll close up. Just will clear. Well, that can't twist worked out perfect for that job. But I will not be able to access the holes with the bolts, so I'm gonna have to take the clamp off. Here's where we're gonna stick our bolts in there. This is where I was saying the uh, button head works real good for this, actually. Just like that. You gotta kinda wiggle a little bit, get those holes in line since you took the clamp off. And then a uh, flat washer. We're gonna go in with our lock nut, just like that. Nice and tight, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one in while we're here. and a lock nut. All right, so we have our bolts in the top there. That's gonna be good, a nice, strong, solid hold for these steps now. But let's go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and drill out these other rivets on both sides. We're gonna go ahead and replace all the rivets with quarter inch stainless steel bolts now. I have to get a punch and a hammer to uh, knock this rivet out. After you try to drill it, it's going to start spinning on you. Just like that. See that? And go ahead and finish drilling out the hole now. Flat washer, lock nuts, start it straight, that's very important. There we go. Just one more to do, do it on the other side, same thing. Nope, let me get my punch and hammer ready. Why? Oh, okay. <laughs> Setting up the shot. <laughs> All right, we're gonna drill out these last two rivets. That is trying to walk on me, so that is not looking too good. A bomb fixed. <laughs> Super glad you're handy. Yeah. 
that one's trying to spin on us. Just got it all in one shot right there. Nice. Yep. Actually, I am because I haven't had any breakfast today. I've been up editing videos for YouTube. I had a cup of coffee. Now we're fixing the steps. I was lazy. It's Sunday. You get to sleep in. Am I going in? Well, there we go. We got it. You just got to finagle it. By the way, I was going to say that um, I ended up using an 1164 drill bit, which is one size over quarter inch it'll provide you a little more clearance in the hole to get these bolts in there for all the metric users those are considered banana measurements <clears throat> there we go all of our bolts are now in the steps this is going to provide a much stronger joint there for these guys and they shouldn't break. That should last us the lifetime of the RV right there. So there's our repair that we made. That's gonna work out good. It's gonna create a nice strong joint there for that guy with no worry of the rivets breaking and falling out of there. So the other quick mod that I wanna do to this, quick for me because it's gonna be movie magic right here. But the way these steps are designed is that you take the adjustable legs here, you just have a pin. It's just a pin with a ball detent. And you see you got your series of drilled holes here that goes through the body. And what this does is provides adjustability. Whenever you set up your RV, you can set these guys wherever you need to so that your steps are level. You see how it's not touching right there because the other one's down obviously. But everywhere we go and we set up, you have to kind of make an adjustment on these steps. The problem that we have run into is a couple things. Our Kodiak is slightly higher than what it was originally because of the, the tires and the axle leaf spring and suspension upgrades that we've made. It's a little bit higher. And we've run into issues where we have used the very last adjustment hole on this guy, which is right here. And it still wasn't down far enough because this is trying to rest on the, uh, the seal plate right here. So what I would like to do, I'm gonna pull these legs out. There's still enough room here that I can drill at least two, maybe three more holes and provide a little bit more adjustability on these legs. The other option that I would like to do is if this doesn't work out, I'm just gonna buy some of this rectangular tubing and I'm just gonna machine a brand new leg or a pair of them that's longer, that has more adjustable, uh, adjustability in there with more drilled holes. Because there's places that we have gone camping and Abby will validate this, where you're in a, you're in a spot, you're in a site. Um, you know what? Devil's Tower was a great example of this. The pad on which the RV you pull in is just, right there where the tires are and then it drops off and out here where you're stepping off is lower than where the camper is setting and that's provided problems with us being able to have our steps sit firmly on the ground and not pushing on the frame of the seal plate here of the door you know you remember yeah. i had to put blocks and stuff underneath there just to get it, the steps to set down so if we can have some legs that have a little bit more adjustability to them, I think it will benefit us in our travels. So I'm gonna take these guys out. We're gonna go to the milling machine in the shop and I'm just gonna drill a few more holes in these and that'll, that'll get us by for a while, but we may end up making some of these new tubes later on down the road. So I'm just seeing what size hole they, uh, they drilled this. 412 thousandths, 412 thousandths there and about. I just moved it, the caliper there. So. What size hole do we need to drill there? Drill bit size. So let's look up here on our decimal equivalent chart. Closest thing we got, 0 0.406 is gonna be a 13 30 seconds drill bit. Or you can go down to the next size, 0 0.421, which is 27 64ths. I believe what they drilled it, which is not on here, 
is 10.5 millimeters. But we're going to drill it 13 30 seconds, which is a plenty, uh, a good clearance hole for a 3 8 diameter pin. Let's go drill it. So we want a 13 30 seconds drill. We'll come over here to my beautiful Cleveland twist drill drill index, and we want a 13 30 seconds. Here it is right here. 13, 30 seconds. I love my drill indexes. Aren't they wonderful? They really are. All right, we're lined up on our hole right there in the center. So I measure this and they're one inch center to center. So each hole provides you one inch of adjustment. So I've got just enough room here. We're gonna put two holes in each one of the legs there. So that'll, that'll provide us two more inches of adjustment on our stairs. We're on zero. Crank it down one inch. Just like that. We're gonna go down to two inches. That's it. Our two holes are drilled. Now we'll need to deburr them, get rid of the sharp edge. I've got some deburring tools that I can uh, use to do that. You see our pin fits, right? Now we'll just take it out. We'll do the other one. See that nasty burr? That's what I'm talking about. Gotta deburr it, but we'll do that before we finish everything out here. are ready to reinstall. All right, so we've got our modified legs there with our extra two inches of adjustment. That's gonna be nice whenever we need it right there. We'll go ahead and reinstall them and what I'll do is just go ahead and, see that? There's still plenty of material there to support this leg. So I don't want people thinking that that, oh, it's weak and it's gonna break. You have, there's another frame inside here that's riveted inside that actually supports the tubing. That's what keeps it secure in there. So there's our lineup right there. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one installed here on this side. Make sure that it lines up. Just like that, bam. Boom. That's gonna work out good. It's great. Mm -hmm. Now that's too high for where we, we were at right here, but I just wanted to show you guys. See that? It's gonna work out good. Yeah. Steps are finally fixed. You're welcome. Okay guys, that's gonna complete our repairs and modification to our Step Above RV Steps right here. This is really gonna help uh, provide a lot more rigidity and safety to our step brackets right here where it's mounted together. And of course, having the two extra inches of adjustability down there. And as I said before, I'm probably gonna order some tubing and at some point, I'm gonna make some longer legs for this step because there's times where the camper is sitting way up high, 
and the RV, the, the, the outdoor area drops way off. And these step, that's where these can kind of, you know, not line up the way you need them to in certain situations. It's not every time, but we've had a handful of uh, RV camps where I couldn't quite get these things level where they need to be. You have to like block up underneath it. So I'm gonna cut me some extra uh, boards to keep in my camp box back here that and we, if we need, we'll be able to just stack some of those uh, two buys un underneath this for these to kind of, you know, get them level the way you want to. The main thing is you don't want it, you don't want this bracket up here like pushing real hard on your seal plate. It needs to be just right there at it and let the feet of the steps support the outer end and not pinch on your seal plate. But that's it. This is, uh, this is a done job. And uh, I was glad to be able to uh, capture it. And maybe that's gonna help somebody out with their step above RV steps. We'll see you on the next video.